Hello, everyone uh, joining right now. Let's uh, give the rest of the attendees uh, a couple of minutes to, to join and connect, and we'll get started. Just before starting, um, let's perform a quick technical check. Um, if you can let me know via the Q&A section or the chat section, if you can see my screen and hear me properly, that'd be great. Thank you. All right, so we're ready to start. Let me introduce myself. My name is Gabriel Sang. I'm Texture Specialist here at Tech Dynamics. And uh, today's webinar um, will be uh, focused on batch printing and rate shopping 101, okay? Uh, let me review the, the main topics that we will deal with uh, today. First of all, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to import and process orders by batch, some of the reasons why uh, batch is uh, beneficial and uh, effective uh, to process orders and uh, how that is um, handled on TechShip side. We're also going to take a little bit of time to review uh, how to set up automatic sorting modes, okay? Uh, we're going to be deep diving on that uh, later as well. Um, this might be uh, really useful uh, if your picking process is a little bit messy or not that efficient. Uh, Tech Dynamics has different tools to um, automate this, uh, the, this, uh, this particular element uh, and part of the process. Uh, and uh, well, we'll be seeing that later. Uh, we're also going to see how to uh, bulk update or correct your batches. Sometimes you might have um, um, blind spots within your WMS uh, and uh, or, well, information that came through in not maybe the best way that you like uh, through an integration. So there's a way to update uh, some critical information uh, and mass when it comes to handling your batches in TechShip. And then we're going to uh, focus the last part of this session into rate shopping based on your customer's needs, how to set up rate shopping and uh, how that is seen when you are batch processing, okay? So let's take the, the first uh, few minutes uh, to review uh, in a little more detail uh, some of these points. And after the presentation, we'll move into a texture portal to play a little bit around uh, with uh, a couple of batches, see what runs behind them and uh, what kind of behavior you can expect based on some of uh, these settings, okay? So first of all, let's talk a little bit about how to import and process orders by batch. Uh, the first qu question over here would be why? Why would you batch instead of processing orders one by one? Uh, depending on how you have structured your um, printing areas and uh, your stations at the at the warehouse, uh, you might be handling orders uh, one by one at a packing line, which does make sense for orders that are different one from each other. Okay, so if it's unpredictable what you would get on each one of the orders, it does make sense that you weigh them, that you measure them uh, or, or dimension them, okay? Because every order might be different, right? If you have a client who's selling uh, tech, uh, 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 tech goods or tech equipment, someone might be ordering one tablet, uh, another person might order a keyboard, a mouse, and... Uh, and uh, and the monitor, uh, some other people might order um, a laptop, headphones, and a printer, right? So every single package is, is going to be or might be different, right? Now, if you have this same client, uh, which has released this uh, special bundle of their new product, 
and uh, they launched a sale online and uh, 2,000 people ordered the exact same thing, it doesn't make sense to process those one, one by one uh, because it doesn't matter who ordered that, everyone is going to get the same thing if the order uh, is exactly the same as somebody else's, right? So why would, why would you go through the physical process of weighing, dimensioning, uh, packing everything separately, one by one, what you could do um, the 2,000 orders in one shot? The only difference that you get at the end is that <clears throat> um, is uh, which box gets uh, uh, any label, in fact, because it doesn't matter where it's going. Um, uh, the only difference between one and the other will be the label, and that's it, right? So in that kind of case, you might want a batch, right? And um, the time that you end up adding at the end, say, for example, that uh, processing an, an individual order takes you 30 seconds at the packing line, right? Um, if you batch those orders, maybe you can take that time to less than one uh, as a sum, of uh, of the process because you won't be you won't be out of those 30 seconds maybe 20 of those seconds is actually uh, uh um weighing dimensioning um sticking the label in the box and some other thing you might do over there like the packing slip for example right um while if you batch process you're going to print 2000 labels in one shot and the only thing you need to worry about is just stick one label to one box and that's it, right? Uh, there could be other reasons why you batch. Uh, obviously, this might differ depending on the warehouse and the type of activity that you run. But I've seen uh, many scenarios, people batching domestic orders altogether and uh, international orders separately from that altogether as well or separated by country or region. There could be many reasons why batch, okay? Independent uh, of the reason why you batch within TechShip, there are two ways to bring that batch in, to import that order into our system. <clears throat> and that would be uh, via either fast import. Typically you use fast import when all the information that you expect the order to have is there, okay? That, that will save you a lot of time. Uh, so you can just bring all the orders in in one shot and when you process and print them, you'll print the process and print them in one shot as well. So you could hit a batch of 100, 1,000 orders, 2,000 orders, as, as many as the system can take, right? Um, by just clicking a few buttons, and that's it. It's uh, 10 seconds of importing uh, and hitting the process button. In worst case scenario, and this is a really, really <laughs> worst case scenario, a minute waiting for all the labels to print, right? So, or, or a couple of minutes if the batch is too, uh, is too big, right? But surely it will save you a lot of time if you were to process those orders one by one at a packing line. Another way to handle this is by preview and assign, okay? <clears throat> this is also seen in the platform as refresh. And uh, it's typically used when you do have most of the information for the orders within the batch. Say, for example, the ship to uh, address, the SKUs within the cartons that should go. Uh, but for example, you have dummy weights or dummy dimensions and, and it's too much work or the WMS is un incapable of allowing you to bulk assign information. So for example, if you would know, oh, this, this new uh, keyboard and mouse bound bundle that we're, that the customer is selling online has 2,000 orders of the same thing. Uh, we're just going to put that in a medium box, okay? So within tech, you don't need to do that in the WMS. You preview the order in TechShip. You're going to get the, the, the 2,000 uh, records there. And uh, you can just pick your box from a dropdown or just enter the dimensions that uh, are going to be used manually and just assign it in bulk to the whole 2000 orders in one shot, okay? We're gonna see how we do that later. But this is a way to approach uh, to import and process orders via batch with uh, or without um, intervention as the information is being pulled in. As for automatic sorting, what we're gonna see here in the course, uh, well, uh, th this directly affects the picking process and can uh, boost productivity in that sense, okay? Um, most likely, uh, um, you already have a picking process in place uh, on your end, 
uh, and um, depending on how organized um, uh, you are, you 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 are on on your side, this might be more or less polished, uh, or depending on the tools you have at hand as well, um, that you would be as polished as you can be. Okay. Uh, within uh, TechShip, you can bring the, the orders uh, within a batch, just as they are in the WMS, in whichever order you have those organized in the WMS. This is what we typically call, uh, call a direct import, okay? Where the order uh, or the sorting of that batch does not uh, have uh, an intervention from TechShip while it's being brought in. But um, you could have TechShip say, well, okay, take a look at all these orders that are coming through uh, and uh, uh, sort them by a unique criteria. For example, sort them by the pick order number, right? Or sort them by uh, the SKUs within them, right? Or sort them by the quantity of the SKUs within them. So you maybe pick uh, orders that have the most amount of uh, um, or the least amount of um, of SKUs within them, and then uh, the most at the end, right? Uh, and sometimes this unique criteria or the location uh, within the, the warehouse, right? Sort them by location. So I go by location one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, depending on what kind of information the WMS is providing. Maybe within the WMS, I ring a hundred orders, uh, all these have locations loaded in them, but they're not being brought in in order, right? So if I print uh, everything, even though it would have the location in the in the packing slip or the pick ticket, uh, fine. But I'll still have to sort these papers manually uh, to well um, grab one and two from um, the, half the stack of the labels I printed, right? And the, and eight from the end, depending on how these are being brought in. So you could say, well, bring me every sort everything by location and print them by location so i can have a clean uh, uh a clean uh route within the the warehouse when i do the picking okay and then you can use combined criteria there are several options that combine different elements of criteria for example sort everything by SKU first then by quantity and then by location okay uh, and uh, and based on that, uh, everything is going to be much clearer at the time of uh, picking, okay? This is something that we're going to see in a few minutes. Um, as you can see over here, uh, these are the the most common ways to, um, to use these features uh, when picking, okay? Uh, those that apply to the case for this particular webinar are two and four, but it's good that we'll review one and three as well. For those that were in a previous webinar, desktop client 101. Uh, but well, uh, option one is the standard and typical picking, right? Uh, you use TechShip desktop client. It's the most basic form of picking uh, where orders are individually picked and packed. And the labels and packing slips are automatically generated by scanning a pick ticket, okay? Uh, and in that case, uh, Typically, you are integrated with a scale and a dimensioner to, uh, well, at the time of packing, uh, to have the system and the devices provide you with an accurate weight and dimensions rather than, but uh, yet possible if you don't, um, if you don't have the devices to manually type in or choose uh, from lists the packing options that you're going to use, and or the weight if you don't have a USB integrated scale. Now, number two. Uh, is something that we will see here in this webinar. So batch picking, okay. Uh, what you typically do is organize orders by batch within the WMS. Uh, you bring all these uh, uh, all together uh, as part of one import. And as it says over there, the labels are uh, and packing slips are printed up front prior to weight picking. So once picked, the orders are packed at the pack station and the boxes are labeled. As you can see here in the map, Instead of uh, walking around the aisles, <laughs> I wouldn't say aimlessly, but surely uh, if you do this uh, by individual order, you're going to have a whole, a whole uh, bunch more trips um, within the warehouse than by uh, batch picking, right? Because uh, if you batch pick, 
and you sort at the same time by, let's say, location, you're going to go, oh, okay, location three, I'm picking this item. Location five, I'm picking this one. Seven, okay, I have to go this way. And as you move forward, you'll be picking everything that you need in a, in a single simple route. And within the packing station, uh, uh, you'll sort uh, these uh, these uh, SKUs, items, and orders uh, accordingly. And if these are the same, that's even easier, okay? Uh, we're going to skip number three um, as uh, part of this webinar, pick to tote, because this is related to texture desktop. But in this case, orders are individually picked as well. That's a number one. Uh, and at the pack, uh, pack station, the tote ID is scanned. Uh, so individual labels and packing slips are automatically printed for that tote ID. And in this case, uh, an order could contain multiple cartons, okay? Depending on, well, that's fully depending on the case. And then if you go into a more automated uh, approach, uh, you could use, uh, and this is for the web client, okay? An integrated bagger, okay? So Texture preloads the orders to the bagger, and then the orders are picked and brought down to the conveyor uh, uh, and dropped in bags. And then the bags are still labeled by the bagger, okay? Yeah, but in this case, again, the physical process of picking, if it's done by humans, um, it's quite similar to option two, okay? But at the end, you have a bagger instead of a packing station. But it would require you to, uh, well, um, typically in this kind of case, to simplify things, um, batch orders that are uh, the same thing. Um, another topic, bulk updates and corrections, okay? Um, these are typically used when you have incomplete or incorrect information coming from the WMS, okay? where on TechShip side, uh, TechShip can um, complement that information, which might be incomplete, or correct information, uh, which uh, might have been received from an integration um, through TechShip. Okay, we'll see. It's not that you can update every single field, but some key fields uh, are, um, uh, are uh, could be handled this way. For example, uh, if you wanted to assign signature re uh, uh, signature to a whole batch, signature required, right? Um, and it's too much work to do it in the WMS, but you know that this specific batch does need signature. Within TechShip, you can just correct the batch or complement the batch on that missing information in just a couple of clicks, okay? And then when it comes to rate shopping, uh, well, you import orders into TechShip, typically without a carrier. There are several several approaches to rate shopping. You could have a carrier versus carrier rate shopping. So you could say, well, I want to get the best rate uh, between FedEx, UPS, and USPS or Canada Post, depending on the case, uh, or whichever carrier that you want to add to your uh, rate shopping. Or if you already uh, have a, a carrier that you want to use, rate shopping within that carrier, okay? And then depending on the contracts that you have, you might have better rates for one service than another that uh, arbitrarily would have been the cheapest option um, uh, in general, okay? But well, um, uh, this requires you to import the order into TechShip to have the client billing account set up, and then TechShip will do the automatic selection, selection based on your criteria, okay? So let's do it. Let's uh, deep dive into how to use these features and uh, how you can make the best out of TechShip in this sense, okay? So right now, um, uh, in this particular um, uh, portal, I have a client called Gold Enterprises, okay? Let me show you this client uh, setup from the maintenance section so you can see what's behind the scenes. I have several clients over here. Let's go to Gold Enterprises. Um, I have several carriers assigned over here. Some of those are in, in, included in uh, the rate shopping schema, others are not, okay? Uh, but what we are going to do right now is uh, import some orders, okay? I'm going to go to orders, import orders. And from this section, I'll be able to bring a batch in, okay? Two keys when you import batches. First of all, over here, uh, you have this first dropdown, okay? This dropdown is going to show you uh, which uh, carriers are integrated into your portal, okay? And two additional options, import and rate shopping, okay? Uh, if you choose import, TechShip will expect uh, the orders in the WMS 
to provide the carrier and the service code, which should be used to process that order, okay? Um, regardless of how you batch in the WMS, you could have a batch which has many carriers, uh, a mix of carriers, let's call it that way, within one batch. Uh, and or you could have homogeneous batches uh, having the same carrier all together. Okay, it's really up to you and how you handle it. But if you want TechShip to use whatever option you have chosen in the WMS, this is a way to do it. You do import. Okay, for this to properly work, you need to make sure that the carrier codes you're sending from the WMS match with the carrier codes that you have set up in TechShip. Okay, so TechShip knows. Oh. You're saying UPS, oh, you mean UPS small parcel and not UPS Freight LTL, okay? For example. Um, so this is the first element to take into account. Whichever other option you choose other than import will ignore the carrier option you're choosing from your WMS and use whatever you choose from here. Rate shopping, for example, here, would ignore if, if you have a batch with 100 orders and three of those orders have FedEx already pre-selected, if the carrier, uh, if, if, if there's a carrier cheaper than FedEx for those three orders, TechShip is going to chip uh, is going to uh, pick the cheapest one because you chose to override your option with rate shopping over here. Okay. Same thing with arbitrary carrier options. If I If I do UPS parcel over here, I'm going to ignore whatever is in the WMS when it comes to carriers and push everything through UPS, okay? So this is the first element you need to take into account. In this case, I'm gonna do rate shopping, okay? And then what I can do from the second dropdown is choose what type of reference I'm going to, um, I'm going to use to push orders into TechShip, okay? From the WMS and into TechShip. The first option, as you can see, is batch number. And while I, I would be able to bring individual orders from this section into TechShip, it's quite inefficient. If, you, if you're going to be bringing orders by pick order number or by reference number, it's better to do it through the desktop client. Uh, and even though that's, a, I mean, even though that's the most common way to do it, if you would have exceptions, for example, you imported a batch of 100 orders, uh, two of them got voided, they got removed from the original batch and you need to import these two and you don't use the desktop client, well, it doesn't make sense to install and set up the desktop client just for a couple of orders. You could perfectly bring those two auto and outs in through here. But in a regular basis, uh, you do not bring orders, uh, individual orders through the TechShip web client. The reason why is because you have too many steps to get to the same place you would get um, uh, if you were using the desktop client. Desktop client is just basically scan the, the pick ticket or scan the reference and that's it. You get your label out. From here, you have six steps to get to print the label. Now for a batch, it does justify having six steps to print that label because you do it once instead of 2000 times if you would have a batch with 2000 orders, see? So in this case, we're gonna choose the reference as batch. And, um, uh, moving a little bit back to what we were talking about uh, when it came to references, uh, sorry, to uh, ways to import the order. Over here, we have these two options, okay? Let's say that the batch I'm going to bring in is batch 14192. That's a reference, that's a batch number I should have in the WMS. But I have two ways to bring it in, refresh or fast import. If I do refresh, what I'm going to do is preview this batch first to then select an action of what I want to do. Preview and then, for example, import and print, which will import, process, and print. Or if I want to go a little bit slower, I can import and process and then print manually later. Or if I just want to import because I want to quote, for example, I can just do import, I won't process, and I won't print. There's really up to you on how fast you want to go or how many actions you want to apply at the same time, depending on those three options. That's as for refresh and uh, these options. You typically use refresh again when you need um, to feed additional data, uh, especially when it comes to packaging and weight. So this is typically used for, or, for batches which have dummy weights or dummy dimensions in the WMS. If you already have everything you need to process the orders, you can just do fast import. That's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to go the fast lane first and then the slow lane so we can see step by step 
how it works. So in this case, uh, just a quick reminder, we're going to rate shop batch. This is a batch number. Let's go for it. Okay. Again, a fast import. Obviously, filling out these two fields or, or three fields takes <laughs> two seconds. Okay. Once you're here, what you're going to do, you'll see that we have a batch of seven orders, right? There's some information which is relevant to what we're doing. Process order count, still zero, nothing there. And what I'm going to do right now is process and print, okay? When I hit process and print, I'm going to say, okay, TechShip is going to go in parallel for each one of these orders, reach the carriers, rate shop, and get the labels back. In this case, we're hitting five carriers for rate shopping and getting the labels and generating all the necessary documentations. Uh, courier labels, packing slips, if there's an international shipment, customs, uh, invoices, everything there. So as you can see, in less than seven seconds, uh, we got this whole batch processed. And as you can see as well, uh, you, we have different carriers and different services. In this case, for example, GTA, GSM, Erski Plus, we have some with UPS over here, UPS Standard, FedEx Ground, uh, Peter Later Ground as well. We do have all the information here, tracking numbers, charges, manifest IDs for them to group them that way, right? Processing time, status. Uh, so everything is ready. And from here, from my printer, I would have got all the courier labels. And then what I can do is go to orders, import orders, rinse and repeat, start again, bring a new batch, fast import, process and print. And that's how it goes. It doesn't matter how many, how many orders your batch has. Uh, the, the, the time you save and the work you save by batching orders and doing it this way is, uh, is, is incredible compared if you were doing all these orders one by one. Okay. Let me show you some of these contents. Okay. In this case, uh, let's see the rate shopping, the way you can see the rates that, that were taken into account for this, um, uh, rate shopping scenario. For example, let's grab this one and the last one as well. Uh, you can edit this section over here and you can go to the rates tab okay each order will have a rates tab when you edit it and from here what you can do is see all the carriers that were taken into account the rates that were provided and what carrier and service was selected was selected based on um uh on, on this criteria the criteria that you had in the rules for rate shopping okay so in this case, GTA GSM for 4120, uh, the closest options or, or the closer one was UPS uh, standard or ground, okay, uh, with uh, $42. So in this case, um, you saved 90 cents, roughly 90 cents on, on the shipment, right? Well, multiply this for by, uh, by 2,000 times and you saved uh, quite some money, okay? Let's take a look at the last one and see uh, how it went through. As you can see, there were less options for this one because not every destination uh, will uh, qualify for uh, rates and shipping by uh, every single carrier or every single service under each carrier. As you can see in this case, um, this might be uh, um, uh, um, a further area uh, than the other ones which had more options. Uh, so as you can see over here, instead of having uh, a lot of options, we only have basic options from Pure Later, UPS, and FedEx. In this case, no FedEx express, um, overnight or second day air, nothing like that, just ground in this case, right? Pure Later ground, one for, uh, one to FedEx for $9. So saving $9 on one shipment or $8.50 uh, is uh, quite a deal, okay? So you when you batch orders and rate up this way, uh, the good news here is that you can forget about the particularities of each shipment. Once you have chosen to rate shop and you have indicated which carriers you want to rate shop, everything that applies to the case will be considered by uh, while anything that does not for that particular shipment will be discarded. Okay, so um, in this particular case, again, I would have got seven labels out of my printer. I would look at those. Okay, Airskip. UPS standard, Airskip Air Plus, ground, first ground. And uh, if the orders were the same, uh, it doesn't matter which label goes where, right? And if the orders would be different, it would be good to have uh, some kind of sorting um, to make sure that I'm not sending the, the, <laughs> the wrong thing to the wrong destination, right? In this case, the, the criteria to sort these orders in, let me show you. 
Let's go to clients here so we can see this. Uh, uh, first of all, the account structure, uh, which we're going to analyze later, um, but also the sort sequence. In this case, you will see that within your client structure, maintenance clients or from the batch clicking in clients view, uh, we get to see that, uh, well, we have the accounts down here, but right now we're going to focus in the sort sequence. Okay. In this case, it says default. So however these orders are coming from the WMS is how they are being sorted and printed. Okay. We're going to deep dive in this in a minute. So we already saw how to fast import, right? Good news here is that we had everything we needed. We had the ship from, the ship to, the, the weight dimensions in the packaging section here, you'll see, oh, this is a 12 by 24 by 12 box weighing 20 pounds. I can get to see the SKUs within here as well. Um, and the, depending on the order is how it's gonna look, right? This one has different SKUs within them, but in a similar box weighing less, 10 times less, this one was two pounds, okay? So um, fast import, if you go to orders, import orders, and you just fast import, um, it's typically used when you do not need additional um, interactions, okay? Uh, just a quick, um, just a, a quick stop here. Um, I see a question in the Q and A uh, section. Um, if you have any questions while um, moving forward with the presentation, please drop them there. And at the end of the presentation, I'll be addressing your questions. Okay. So yes, please be patient. Uh, patient, uh, we'll be checking those. Good. So uh, dealing or refresh. Uh, imagine in the case that I had this batch. Uh, one for 192, but I know that the packing information there is just dummy data, right? I can refresh over here, bring all this information in. And as you can see, it says it has the same box all over the place, but the weight is different, right? So maybe what I want to do is say, well, uh, for some of these orders, the ones weighing uh, more than five pounds, I'm going to use a large box. And for those that have less or that are less than five pounds, what I'm going to do is use a small box. Okay. So what I'm going to do over here, you'll see that in this section, let me uh, highlight it in this section, you have selection boxes. Okay. I'm going to unselect those. Uh, select none. Okay. I'm going to select those that have more than two, more than five uh, pounds of weight. Right. And over here, here below, this section, what I'm going to do is assign boxes to it, to them. Okay, I'm going to repack these in large boxes. Instead of the 12 by 24 by 12, I'm going to do 24 by 24 by 24. Once I have selected this, I'm going to click set box, and I want you to uh, pay attention to these sections. Okay, I'm going to make a change here, here, and here in mass. Okay, so when I click set box, there we go everything gets reassigned. Uh, if I, uh, in this case, if I'm doing a, a true false scenario, right? It's like, okay, these are five pounds uh, up and the other ones are five, five pounds down. I don't need to manually select all this. I already did my selection for one of the criteria. So what I can do to make it fast, uh, to make it faster is just do the reverse selection here. When I do reverse, all those that are unselected will be selected and vice versa. So over here, you can just say small boxes to everyone else. And that's it. I have all my packaging uh, information properly set up. It doesn't matter if these are seven orders or 700, okay? But once I'm ready to go, what I can do is say, well, and now I'm ready, I want to import because I need to quote, or I want to import and process because I want to generate the labels. Maybe I don't want to bring them right now but I want to process all these orders or I, or I can do everything in one shot and just import process and print. That's what I'm going to do right now. Okay. But remember you can set boxes in this section over here. You'll see just this three, uh, but you are able to add as many boxes as you want. So you can have as many predefined box options as required. Okay. In this case, I'm going to do import and print. Oh, okay. Just a second. Um, let me select everything. <laughs> so I bring the whole batch in. That's why I got the error message. And there we go. We're bringing everything in right now. And uh, it's going to ask me if I want to trigger uh, process and print because, uh, well, we're going to reach the carriers for rates. And, uh, and this way, uh, we'll be getting our labels in a couple of seconds. Okay. 
Again, we're rate shopping against five carriers, uh, Pure Later, UPS, FedEx, uh, uh, GDA, GSM, and um, yeah, I'm missing one. And the other were, uh, were LTL options, okay? If there are any issues, okay, like we are seeing right now when you process the orders, uh, obviously, as usual, you're able to click uh, these error messages to troubleshoot through the need to hand assistant to try to find what the problem is. But this is a really good hint when you are dealing with many orders uh, in one batch, because the system pages by uh, 10 orders per page. Okay, so if you have a 700 order batch, uh, sorry, 20 orders per page. So if you have a 700 order batch, uh, you could have a whole bunch of pages there. And, and uh, if you wouldn't be able to quickly spot those errors so you can fix them and try to process them again, it might be quite troublesome if you need to navigate manually through every single page uh, uh, over a sea of properly processed orders to just try to find the one you're looking for or the, or the few you're looking for that um, didn't process properly, okay? The first hint over here to know if you have errors is this one. If you know that the batch is 700 orders, but then you have um, uh, four process orders, you know that you have errors. Maybe the first page might be pristine clear, but maybe uh, in page eight, you have some errors. Page 15, you have more errors. So if these two numbers don't match, it means that you have errors in this batch, okay? And the, the quick way to get to those errors, get them uh, at plain sight instead of navigating is by using this filter up here. You have status. So from here, you could say, I don't want to see all of my orders because the ones that processed, processed already. And that's fine. I don't need to take care of those. But I want to bring everything that, for example, uh, uh, has an error on it. And if you do it that way, as you can see, Texture will bring those exact group of, that exact group of orders so you can manually deal with them and say, oh, okay, this one, well, maybe this one has a bad zip code. Uh, this other one, well, maybe this other one uh, is missing skew information because it's an international order, so on and so forth. You fix all of them, and then you process and print uh, those that that's particular and specific group, okay? The, the criteria that can apply over here is unprocessed orders, merged, error, processing, canceling, failing, war warning, estimating, uh, creating the dangerous goods, um, well, creating the DGIS if you're doing dangerous goods. So uh, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of uh, things uh, that you can do from here to have quick access to what you're looking for, okay? Um, before we approach uh, uh, or before we have an approach on sorting uh, the batches, okay, I want to show you how to correct issues uh, in mass, okay, or to update in mass. Within the action buttons down here, you'll find one which is called mass edit, okay? This mass edit button, when I click on it, will allow me to apply actions, okay, uh, to the orders uh, as a group to every selected order that I have over here. Uh, these changes can be uh, done to unprocessed orders. So orders that were already processed cannot be altered. These get locked until you until you avoid them if you need to make a change. But over here, for example, you could say, well, to every single order that I have over here, I want to enable signature. Maybe that's what I was missing, right? Or I want to repack in uh, a medium box. Okay, I made a mistake. These should have been large boxes. So I'm going to do it this way, okay? And apply... Um, uh, apply a different type of packaging. Once you've done so, you save it and the changes will apply automatically. Once you're ready to go, you can process the orders again and see what happens. Okay. Um, so this is how um, how you can apply these corrections in mass. Uh, typically, it's for accessorials. We have been expanding those, uh, uh, those options for uh, quite some time. And uh, um, typically, we, we upgrade the, uh, this module by request when whoever needs, okay, over here, I need to, uh, I'm shipping LTL and I need this and that field. Oh, cool. We'll do it there. Li lift gate, for example, okay? Or uh, I don't know, uh, I'm shipping alcohol and I need a drop down there to choose uh, how I'm going to report that, okay? This kind of operation. 
but again, the mass edit button is really good. In this case, for example, we were able to fix two of the orders. Maybe the third one, uh, maybe the second one has something else that we might need to review. But at least in this case, we um, we processed the, the main part of the batch. We cherry picked the errors. We corrected a couple of things. We went through those as well. We cleared 85% um, uh, of this batch just in a few clicks, okay? But well, this is how you interact with, with these. Now, if you take a look at uh, the order this batch has, or the order this ha batch has been brought uh, through, uh, in this case is uh, the, the pick order number. As you can see, this is a, a succession uh, based on the, the, the numbering of the pick order numbers, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, right? Um, but depending on how you, um, you will approach picking, processing, and packing, this might or might not be efficient, okay? Because maybe pick order number 51 uh, has two items in location, uh, let's say from, from A to, to Z, okay, in location uh, M, okay? While uh, this one, uh, 52 is in location A, 54 has a couple of things in location B and location uh, D, right? And everything is mixed up or the quantity, right? Uh, I wanna order by the quantity of that of items within each order. So this one, for example, is gonna take a lot of space when I, while I'm picking uh, because I have six items within there, okay? Uh, let's say, let's take a look at the second one. In this case, this one has four. The other one has uh, uh, um, 11, okay? And uh, this other one uh, might just have two or one. Okay, so maybe I want to say I'm going to grab the orders that have more or, or less items uh, first so I can organize um, uh, how I'm picking. Okay, obviously, uh, ordering orders by, by number, by pick order number, will not do it. Okay, or will not create a, a, an efficient route if I'm uh, picking by location. Start it at uh, location A and going down to location C to go to the packing line afterwards. Okay. So a way to approach this is by, let me go to clients here. This is another environment I have uh, with a similar client, uh, but the same batch, okay? Let's give it a moment to load. Let's go to gold enterprises again and handle the sort sequence. And instead of, of it being default, I, I can tell the system, um, I want to sort these by location, right? Or I want to sort these by quantity. Or I want to sort these by location, the SKU and the quantity, or the carton, the location, and the SKU, or the carrier and the service, okay? So depending on how you handle it here, okay, uh, the, the batch will be reorganized at the time of importing the order. Whichever option you choose over here, if you're going to do, use a separate sort, uh, a different sort sequence than default, remember to save it, okay? That's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to import that exact same batch so we can compare one side, uh, side by side. Uh, I'm going to be bringing batch 14192, rate shopping, fast import, just as it came through, okay? So uh, we have this one here and the original one, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, at the original one and then sorted, okay? As you can see over here, we have 55, seven, two, four, one, six, and three. And if I take a look at the contents of these, if I go to packaging and then I open it, you'll see that it's ordering everything from the order with the least amount of SKUs to the order with the most amount of SKUs. If I open the last one here, this one is the one that has two, four, uh, we got nine over here and 11 as well, okay? So it, it's, it's, a, it's an efficient way to, to handle your picking if you're picking in this case by quantity. But uh, depending on the criteria you wanna use, you could say you could do it that way. In some cases, this might depend on uh, information that you might need to additionally provide from the WMS, for example, the location, okay? 
While in some cases it will be just natural to the order, uh, because if you have SKUs or if you have a, well, if you're sending SKU information as part of the order, you have the SKU and you have the quantity as well. Okay, maybe the location is an additional piece of data you might want to uh, choose. Okay, uh, or you might want to provide from the WMS. Okay, so some of these options might be limited to what you are sending from the WMS, and that most of them uh, are just out of the box, natural to um, the 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 order uh, uh, data set uh, in in most of the scenarios in the regular scenarios. Okay. Um, okay, and just wrapping up and going to rate shopping, and I'll be approaching, uh, I'll, I'll be engaging the questions in the Q&A section. Um, let me show you the client section here, because over here we did do the rate shopping. We had some carriers being shown there, GTA, GSM, UPS, FedEx, Pure Later, okay, uh, with their services, depending on the case, today, Standard, Express Saver, Express Early, so on and so forth. But let's take a look at the, the, the client section here. I'm going to click view. So this takes me to maintenance clients and highlight that client um, in one shot. Okay. And as you can see, uh, we would have the possibility in this case. And in fact, we were rate shopping USPS, for example. But it's not a surprise that if these uh, shipments are Canadian, for example, which is the case right now, the ship from uh, address is Canadian and the ship to address is Canadian as well, that we don't get rates for USPS, right? But we do for Pure Later because uh, in this case, Pure Later does provide the service there, right? Um, so for you to make sure that you're able to rate shop and what you include into your rate shopping, you have to take a couple of things into account. First of all, to trigger the rate shopping, okay? Trigger rate shopping can be done on different ways. One of them, depending on your WMS capabilities, is to send an empty carrier code. And within here, if your WMS supports it, which in this case, which in this, case this one doesn't, you'll see a checkbox over here too, which says import empty carrier as rate shopping. So if you don't assign a carrier in the WMS, you will understand, oh, it doesn't have a carrier, it should be rate shopping. So let's rate shop that one. The disadvantage of this method is that it could be a little bit confusing for the warehouse staff if they see a whole bunch of orders without a carrier and some with a carrier, right? So if I see a list of 100 orders and I see uh, 50 without carrier and the other 50 with UPS, FedEx, DHL, USPS, Canada Post, Pure Data, et cetera, I might say, hey, someone made a mistake. They forgot to load a carrier code over here. So let me choose some things and it breaks the rate shopping, right? The other alternative is to create a, a, a new carrier code in your WMS and you letting us know what carrier code that is. So within your texture portal, we can assign the portal to understand that carrier code, uh, carrier code air quotes, right? As rate shopping. So if you want to call it rate shop or best rate or best price or however you want to call it, potato chips, right? You let us know how you called it. We set it up in your texture portal. And whenever that carrier code, uh, air quotes again, is uh, detected, TechShip is going to automatically rate shop. That's triggering rate shopping. Now, what do you rate shop is a whole different story. And that will depend on which accounts you have set to rate shop, like you have it here, okay? Setting an account for rate shopping can be done by editing the billing account, in this case, for example, FedEx, and you'll see a checkbox called enable rate shopping. When this checkbox is on, okay, then the account, whenever a, a rate shopping request is put through, this account will be considered providing the rates. There's another checkbox over here that says use markup in rate shopping. If I choose this option, I'll be also adding the markup to the rate that's coming from the carrier, okay? This is fully optional, okay? To rate shop, you need to have this on. But you could say, in this case, I would be rating, uh, uh, rating uh, and comparing the rates coming from the carrier as they come, okay? Typically, it's your negotiated rate, okay? So in that case, if the carrier says $12, that's $12 or $10, okay? But if I have $10 as the base rate, but I add a 20% markup to my shipment, I might want to say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to rate shop the, 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 my rates. 
I want to rate shop my markup rates, okay, which is what I'm going to charge my customer. And in, in that case, you might want to say, well, let's use the markup in the rate shopping. Because if for one carrier, you have a 20% markup, for, the other, for another, you have a 10%, for the other 18, for the other 15, so on and so forth, you could say, well, let's rate shop everything that I'm going to charge at the end to my customer, okay? Um, and using markup at the rate shopping is a possibility that way. And this will include the fixed markups that you add and the percentage as well. If you have a handling fee of $1 and a 20% markup over here, you'll get that $10 uh, set to 20, uh, sorry, to 12, uh, adding this 20% and then $13 with this additional $1 handling fee at the end. So you will be rating 13 instead of 10 versus other carriers, okay? And you could also go into the realm of restrictions if you want to exclude, include, uh, or uh, even go a little bit further with advanced mode into selecting or blocking uh, services that you might want or might not want, okay? This is a topic for another webinar. In fact, we did uh, 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 share the webinar a couple of months ago on advanced uh, rate shopping and the basic rate shopping. Uh, but yeah, you might want to uh, review that one uh, or uh, jump in into our next uh, um, the next time that we that we provide a rate shopping webinar. And of course, you have our documentation, video tutorials uh, on how to handle that in in our knowledge base as well. Okay, but this is how you uh, get your rate shopping around um, your customer needs. Okay, if your customer says, "I want this, this, and that." Check them all, make sure that everything is fine, add or remove restrictions to match what they actually, uh, what you actually need to provide as a service, okay? Let me jump into the questions in the Q&A section. So someone asks, uh, when I try to rate shop USPS, always comes up at 0 0.01. So I have to rate shop excluding USPS. Is there a way to fix this? Um, there could be different reasons why um, uh, you're getting that. It would be good if you can open a support ticket, uh, okay, um, to see um, why this is happening, okay? Um, it would be interesting to see how the account is set up, how the rates are being received, and if there's any markups in place for you to get that rate, okay? and which services are being uh, taken into account. USPS, for example, is uh, by default, when you add a USPS account, uh, depending on the, on, the, on the provider of the service, because USPS is resold by many uh, companies. But for example, through a stamps.com account, when you add it to TechShip, uh, by default, library mail and media mail are excluded because uh, uh, those obviously will win any rate shopping because they're subsidized and they're really cheap, right? But it, it's like they will win 99% of the shopping, uh, over the rate shopping, but you're going to ship 1% uh, 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 of books most likely if you're going to do it that way, okay? Okay, uh, okay, good. Uh, EHUB. Now, it's good that you mentioned it because I was going to uh, talk about uh, consolidators. So if it is through EHUB, uh, it's good. It would be great if you can open a support ticket so uh, you can you can review that in more detail uh, and see how the account is set up. If there's any uh, anything at the baseline account or at the billing account level uh, for that to happen, or even if everything is right on TechShip send, if there's anything on eHub side that, that might be um, affecting this when uh, providing the rates back. To be honest, is uh, is the first time I I, I hear about. Um, uh, returning uh, 0 0.01 as a fixed value every time. Uh, that's what I understand from the question. Um, I have had cases of uh, just a zero rates um, or uh, rates off where, well, sometimes there are configurations that, uh, um, that might be in place or that uh, could be fixed in that sense. But yeah, it would be great if you can open a support ticket. Uh, so you can include USPS within your rate shopping, okay? In the meantime, um, the the my solution would be to turn it off. And if you if there are issues with uh, with that, you might want to use custom rates. It's not the most efficient way to do it because you need to update the rates manually every time they change. 
uh, as, but at least as a, as an alternative to just not using it. Okay, while it's being fixed. But my suggestion would be uh, opening a support ticket and have the team review end to end and the API calls that we do to uh, eHub to see what might be wrong, what short circuit might be happening in the middle. Good. Uh, the last question, and we're almost in time. Uh, it says over here, can rate shopping OMRs can be created by transit time? For example, orders need to deliver within three days, select the cheapest service. Yes, that is possible. There's several ways to approach it. Um, and uh, let me just uh, give you a brief, um, a brief uh, sample over here. Okay. This can be achieved in two different ways. Uh, we're a little bit away from um, uh, the, the, the batch by itself topic. Okay. Uh, and we have had some webinars on OMR and advanced rules as well, but let me just take the last two minutes to, to give you an example. In this case, for example, <clears throat> I could either group these orders uh, through a rate shopping group, okay, um, based on whatever information the WMS can provide. Okay, so for example, I would say, I don't know what the, the criteria is in this case for transit time, uh, but I could say, well, every order, let's, let's just do it this way. Every order that has an order, uh, uh, sorry, every order that has a SKU, uh, which in the description says chocolate, might go bad if, oh, sorry, not all like, at least one like. That was the criteria I was looking for. Uh, or maybe at the SKU, at uh, the line level would be more efficient. Like chocolate, okay? so. If this Q description includes the word chocolate, okay, I'm gonna be adding this to the rate shopping group, uh, uh, exp uh, expedited. So as queues come in, when I import this order, uh, when I import orders where, where the description includes the word chocolate, I'm gonna expedite these, okay? I, I have categorized these under the expedited group. And uh, within the carriers, let's say Canada Post in this case, <clears throat> let's go with UPS. So a little bit more international. Okay. Let's say UPS. When I'm setting up the restrictions, oh, that we have a whole bunch of things over here. <clears throat> Let me clean this up. There we go. Have a fresh start. Um, what I would like to do is say, well, I want to allow all the orders matching the criteria below. I can be specific on the services. I could say, uh, well, uh, just bring me any th any service, uh, which uh, or bring me all the services as long as um, the rate shopping group <clears throat> is different from expedited. So if it's not expedited, bring me anything, right? But if it is expedited, I want I don't want to use ground or UPS standard because it won't make it. The chocolate might melt. Maybe I do want to use ground as long as the transit day dates uh, are uh, less than three, right? So I could say, bring me ground, bring me uh, expedited, bring me uh, second uh, three day select, second day air. So thinking about it this way. Uh, whenever uh, the order is uh, within the expedited group, that is chocolate, okay? And that the transit days, estimated delivery days, are less or equal than three. Okay. So in this case, for regular orders, as long as it's not expedited, bring me the cheapest thing you find around. Doesn't matter if it takes one day, if it takes two weeks, just bring me the cheapest uh, uh, scenario. But if the order includes chocolate, that is, if it is within the expedited group, Check for every service that I want to ship uh, ship through, if the delivery days are uh, three or less. Okay, in this case, for example, if I would be shipping from, let's say, uh, from Quebec to uh, Vancouver, if I do a ground, it might take more than three days. So if the transit days for Canada Post, uh, sorry, for UPS ground, are more than three, this one is going to be out of the game. And the next option, the cheapest option out of these three is the one that's gonna get picked, see? 
and so on and so forth. Everyone that doesn't qualify for the case will be discarded. And from that select group that matches all your criteria, that's where you're going to be picking it from. Okay. Very well. Um, uh, you can uh, you can consult our uh, uh, knowledge base in this terms. For example, advanced restrictions. Time. Okay. And we're here is going to guide you on, well, how to do it by um, transit time. And then we have a document over here, which is uh, 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 the main one. Well, can't find it right now. Just doing it on the fly. I think it's uh, uh, rate dropping restrictions. But we have one which has uh, a list over here. We have it. Okay, delivery days and dates. And this article will guide you into how to configure uh, these scenarios that we just saw. Okay. But well, uh, we're over time, uh, three minutes. I like to, I don't want to be disrespectful uh, disrespectful uh, of your time. So thank you for joining. We'll have this webinar available online in our YouTube channel, and we hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining today. Bye-bye.